So this is just about like roughly one minute of video that I want to show you. So this is your cue. If you're like washing the dishes or doing something else and not watching or just this is the prep, you should look at this. Let's go ahead and put it up here. You'll see in the video, um, there's this woman and she's holding that blue flag with the stars on it. That is the flag of the EU. That's the European Union flag. And you can see there's this young man at her feet that got knocked down, just blown across the pavement. A water cannon that's being aimed at them. And then this, this, you see her start to get help. The guy in the red cap comes forward first to help her stand so she won't be knocked down and pushed back by the water cannon. But then you see there's these other people. As they realize she's still standing, um, that she's not afraid. I'm sure she is afraid, but she's still waving that flag. She's refusing to be pushed back. And when they realize she's not backing down, more people join her and link arms with each other around her to hold her up. And it's it's mostly men, it's at least one other woman, and they're holding onto each other so they can keep standing against this water cannon. And the people in front get knocked down by the water cannon, um, but they're standing together. Ultimately, there's enough of them so that she's able to stay standing to keep waving that flag. And eventually, faced with more and more people coming forward to hold on to each other in this group that they can no longer knock down. Eventually, the police stop. They go from trying to knock down this one woman with the flag to turning it off. They stop when everybody comes forward to back her up. This was earlier this month in Georgia. Georgia, the country, not Georgia, the state. This is in their capital city of Tbilisi. And these protesters, you should know, they won. Um, not just that woman who kept waving that flag, but the protesters that she was with, they won. Russia has been trying to exert more control over all the countries in the former Soviet Union, including Georgia. And Russia basically told the Georgian government that they should pass a law like Putin did in Russia back in 2012. Uh, it's called the foreign agent law, and it's basically designed to shut down civil society, let the government close down organizations and advocacy groups and news organizations and, and, and prosecute people for belonging to them if those organizations criticize the government or if they do anything else that the government doesn't like. Putin did this in Russia in 2012 to shut down civil society in his country, to get rid of his rivals and public critics, to shut down all dissent now he's trying to get other countries that he wants to be in the Russian orbit, including Georgia. He's trying to get those other countries to do things all like this too. I'm an older man that love and all the problem women. in Tbilisi is that the people in Georgia don't want that. Uh, they, they don't want to be some Russian outpost. By a large margin, they want to be part of the West. They want to join NATO, for example. They want to join the European Union. Hence this woman waving the EU flag. And when Russia told the Georgian government they needed to pass this new law that would essentially get rid of civil society and journalism in their country, the people of Georgia poured out into the streets night after night for protests. Um, and it was peaceful protests. They did spray paint things like no to Putin and F Putin everywhere, both in Georgian and in English. Georgian politicians, even from the ruling party, started coming out and saying that they were with the protesters. They were not with the government on this. They did not support this Russian pro-authoritarian law. And in the face of those big protests, eventually that government in that country decided they couldn't bear it. And so they dropped the bill. They dropped the bill. The government gave up. They also freed all the people who had been arrested in those big, peaceful protests in the streets of the Georgian capital. This was less than three weeks ago. It worked. The people did it. They stopped that law that would have undone civil society, voluntary organizations, advocacy groups, journalism. That was just this month. That was earlier this month in the nation of Georgia. Here's what that same dynamic looks like in the nation of Israel. Uh, we have been covering this for a few weeks here now on the show. These have been the largest mass demonstrations, the largest popular protests in the history of that country since it was founded 75 years ago. The prime minister there has, has been indicted on serious corruption charges. Perhaps coincidentally, he decided at the same time that he now believes the court system needs to be no longer independent. He's decided that he wants to take control of the judicial system now. But the people of that country have taken to the streets to say no. No, you cannot have a democracy without law enforcement that is independent and free from political control. 
People turned out in the streets in lots of cities all over Israel in huge, unprecedented numbers. Members of the military said that they too objected. They said without a real court system, without a real and independent judiciary, they were afraid they'd be forced to comply with unconstitutional illegal orders because there'd be no court system to call those orders unconstitutional. They therefore conveyed that there were going to be problems in the military as well as in the streets if they went ahead with this judicial takeover. This weekend, the defense minister said, you know what, we cannot do this. I'm a part of this government, but I'm in opposition now to what the prime minister is trying to do in taking over the legal system. Defense secretary came out and said, no, we cannot do this. And when the prime minister fired the defense secretary in response, people came out overnight last night by the hundreds of thousands. And then today they turned it up even further. All universities in the country closed. No flights out of the country's main airport. Ports closed. Malls closed. Stores, fast food chains, libraries, museums, all closed. Main roads blocked. Hospitals. Hospitals suspended everything but emergency care. Even the diplomats went on strike. Their embassies and consulates around the world closed. The head of their consulate in New York quit his job in protest. In every major city in that country, people turned out in the streets, waving flags, singing the national anthem, saying, hands off the judiciary, hands off the court system. Our legal system stays independent. You will not take it over. We are not giving up this pillar of what makes us a democracy. They also have now won. Today, they won. The prime minister delayed and delayed and delayed the speech he was supposed to make to the public about how he was going ahead with this plan no matter what. But then finally, he did give that speech and he announced, OK, actually, we're shelving it. They're not going to force it through like they were planning, at least not yet. So it worked in both places, less than three weeks apart. One place today in Israel, one place earlier this month in Georgia, people in the hundreds of thousands saying no really loudly. I mean, they honestly ran a clinic on what it means to say no to authoritarian style takeovers, to stick up for your democracy, to know what makes your democracy real and to say, no, you guys cannot take that away. We will defend our democracy. We will defend it. It is not yours to take. It is ours collectively. And we say no. It worked. The push toward authoritarian forms of government is real all over the world. There's pressure on democracies everywhere. Authoritarian governments are rising everywhere. But also everywhere, there are citizens of democratic countries who get it and who aren't giving it up without a fight. And the secret, of course, is that when you fight, you very often win. And when you don't fight, you always lose. Tonight in the state of Georgia, here in the United States, Republicans have just within the past hour finalized legislation that will allow them to remove from office the prosecutor, the Georgia prosecutor in Fulton County, who is leading a criminal investigation that could result in criminal charges against former President Donald Trump. The Republican governor in Georgia, Brian Kemp, has said he supports this legislation. He is therefore expected to sign it. In the face of the leader of their party facing potential indictment, Georgia Republicans have decided for the first time in their state, the judicial system will be subject to a new partisan test. The Republican controlled legislature tonight has awarded itself the ability to remove prosecutors who bring cases they do not like. And this is not in, not in Georgia, the country, this is Georgia here. And I put this up alongside what's just happened in Georgia, what's just happened in Israel, because I do think sometimes it's easier to see the pattern of these things when you see them far away, when you see them happening in other countries, especially when they happen in totally disparate parts of the world. But this one, this one's happening to us here at home. The question, honestly, is not why Republicans are trying to dismantle this part of our legal system. The question for us is whether anybody's going to stand up for that part of our legal system and try to save it. More ahead tonight. Stay with us. Mungu yumwe ma, wale mungu 